What is up guys, welcome back to the Wildcast. Hope you all doing well out there. In this video, we're gonna be doing another update to the Virginia Roberts versus Prince Andrew case. The case is currently in discovery, so both sides are looking for evidence uh, against the other side to make their case. And uh, last time in our last video, we talked about the Virginia Roberts side uh, asking Judge, uh, Judge Kaplan to issue deposition requests for uh, two people in the UK. Today, we're going to be talking about the first two requests for depositions that have been um, that have been asked by Prince Andrew's side, which have to do with her uh, Virginia Roberts husband and also Dr. Judith Lightfoot, who was um, one of uh, Virginia Roberts psychologists. OK, so those are the two, two people that they want to talk to, that they want to pose. And they're asking the uh, central authority in Australia to help facilitate these depositions, okay? So that's what we're gonna be talking about in this video, going into some details about what they wanna ask these people. So Prince Andrew's lawyers are using the same legal tools that we talked about yesterday to do these depositions that the Virginia Roberts side is using, specifically the Hague Convention, uh, 28 uh, U.S. Code 1781 and Federal Rules of Civil Procedure 28B. So these are the uh, legal tools that are available for um, U.S. citizens who want to depose and get testimony from uh, foreigners that are not within the jurisdiction of U.S. courts. Otherwise, you would just issue a subpoena. Uh, federal courts would just issue a subpoena for a person to show up, show up if they don't uh, want to cooperate voluntarily. But when it's another country, uh, American courts have no jurisdiction over Australia and the U.K., so they have to appeal to the judicial authorities in those specific countries. So yesterday we talked about the UK. Today we're looking at Australia because both these people, uh, Lightfoot and also Robert Giffray, are citizens uh, or residents. I'm not sure if they're citizens, but they're residents of Australia. And um, so we have, so the uh, Prince Andrew side has to appeal to the central authority of Australia. That is the uh, facilitating legal body that they're talking to in order to get these depositions done. Okay. So let's take a look at what they want to, uh, what, what, they, what exactly what they want to talk about. <clears throat> Mr. Giffray is plaintiff Regina Roberts' husband, who allegedly met plaintiff in Thailand in or about 2002 when she was uh, attending a massage training course and recruiting one or more women to perform uh, sex acts for Jeffrey Epstein. Mr. Giffray and plaintiff moved to Australia and married in or about 2002. Mr. Giffray has relevant information regarding plaintiff's domicile since 2002, her relationship with Epstein and Gillen Maxwell, plaintiff's role in recruiting underage girls for Jeffrey Epstein's alleged trafficking scheme, and plaintiff's allegations against the defendant. Mr. Giffray has publicly supported plaintiff's public advocacy work for victims of abuse and trafficking and is likely to have information regarding plaintiff's non-profit organizations. Victims refuse silence and speak out act reclaim. Um, he also is likely to have information about plaintiff's alleged emotional and psychological harm and damages. The proposed letter of request to the Central Authority of Australia, attached here to as Exhibit A, seeks permission to depose Mr. Giffray in Australia and identifies topics for the proposed deposition. So let's look at exactly what they want to talk about. Okay, so this is from Exhibit a, that they published. These are some of the questions that they would like asked by the Australian authorities of Robert Giffray, who is Virginia Roberts' husband. This court requests that Mr. Giffray be examined on the following topics. The circumstances under which Mr. Giffray met the plaintiff in or about 2002. Plaintiff's domicile since 2002. Mr. Giffray's discussions with plaintiff regarding defendant. Uh, plaintiff's alleged childhood trauma and abuse. Nature of plaintiff's relationship with Epstein and Maxwell. All claims plaintiff has made against the defendant. The Giffray household finances. Okay. Any role Ms. Giffray has now or ever had in founding, funding, and or operations of plaintiff's non-profit charitable organizations, victims refuse silence and speak out reclaim, um, plaintiff's alleged emotional and psychological harm and damages, plaintiff's role in recruiting and trafficking underage girls for Epstein, and Mr. Giffray's communications with plaintiff and or her representatives regarding defendant and or his pending action. So most of these requests here uh, are related to the civil action at hand. So they're reasonable questions to inquire about. But the Giffray household finances seem like a personal matter that is not really in the purview of this lawsuit, unless they can make a good argument as to how that's relevant. I don't see how her household finances have anything to do with what happened to her with 
uh, Prince Andrew. So it's not really materially uh, legally relevant to this case. But uh, the rest of the questions seem at least tangentially related <laughs> to the que to the uh, civil action at hand here. So so they can probably get away with it. OK, so these are the things that they want to talk to Robert Giffray about. Next, we move on to the uh, second person they want to talk to, and that's uh, Dr. Judith Lightfoot, who is also residing in Australia, like I said before. Dr. Lightfoot is plaintiff psychologist from whom plaintiffs sought counseling. Dr. Lightfoot has relevant information regarding plaintiffs' alleged abuse by Epstein and Maxwell, childhood abuse and trauma, and claimed emotional and psychological harm and damages. Dr. Lightfoot's records, or lack thereof, reflecting plaintiff's allegations against the defendant, is relevant to preparation of his defense for trial. The proposed letters of request to the Central Authority of Australia, attached here to as Exhibit B, seeks permission to depose Dr. Lightfoot in Australia and obtain certain records from Dr. Lightfoot and identifies topics for the proposed deposition and requested documents. Okay, so... What do they want to ask Dr. Lightfoot? And these questions might be problematic given the fact that she's a psychologist. She was a psychologist for, for Virginia Roberts. So we'll talk about that in a second, okay? The court requests that Dr. Lightfoot be examined on the following topics. Dr. Lightfoot's medical treatment of plaintiff and circumstances under which such medical treatment ended. Dr. Lightfoot's diagnosis of plaintiff. Nature and consequences of plaintiff's alleged childhood trauma and abuse. Matters discussed during Dr. Lightfoot's sessions with plaintiff, prescriptions written for plaintiff by Dr. Lightfoot, invoices issued by Dr. Lightfoot to plaintiff, claims plaintiff made about defendant, if any, opinions regarding plaintiff's alleged emotional and psychological harm and damages, theory of false memories. Don't be ridiculous. Um, communications with plaintiff and or her representatives regarding defendant and or this pending action. So lots of problems there, which we're going to go over in a second. But here are the documents they want. Documents to be inspected. The court requests that Dr. Lightfoot permit inspection of the following documents. Dr. Lightfoot's notes from all sessions with plaintiff. Prescriptions issued to plaintiff by Dr. Lightfoot. Copies of all invoices issued by Dr. Lightfoot to Regina Roberts and her representatives for the medical treatment and services rendered by Dr. Lightfoot. Dr. Lightfoot's correspondence with plaintiff and or plaintiff's representatives regarding the pending action. Okay, so many, many different problems here. First, unless the patient waives the confidentiality, the testimonial privileges, one of the most important testimonial privileges is doctor-patient confidentiality. As you can see here, the physician-patient relationship and the psychotherapist-patient relationship. So what does that mean? That means that Virginia Roberts has to waive the privilege. So what does that mean? That means that these communications between doctor and, and patient and lawyer and uh, client, all these are privileges that the court and the government cannot pry into unless, unless there is an, uh, a very good exception for it. Okay. So there are many exceptions to these privileges, uh, just two of them that might be relevant. If there's a criminal enterprise going on that the doctor knows about that that his or her patient is engaged in then she can um, you know, divulge that information to the authorities if she thinks that another person is going to get harmed or the patient is going to harm himself or herself then the doctor can talk to the authorities but and also there's a there's also the exception where there's a third party present in the room while these examinations are happening if that's the case then the privilege does not apply so doctor patient privilege is very sacred in our system uh, psychologists and doctors do not want to tell anybody about what they talk about with their patients, especially psychotherapists. Otherwise, people will not trust them and will not talk to doctors. So that's why there's a there's a rational reason why these privileges exist. And unless there's a very good reason that the Prince Andrew side can provide, Dr. Lightfoot is not going to communicate with them about intimate details about Virginia Roberts's discussions and her her problems, whatever she was talking about, uh, psychological issues that she had back then, and other things, other very, very personal things that, that, that people discuss with their doctors. So the bottom line here is that Prince Andrew's lawyers cannot compel Dr. Lightfoot to testify unless they can show a valid exception to the privilege to the doctor-patient confidentiality privilege and or they get permission from Virginia Roberts to talk to her psychologist, which I don't think will be forthcoming, but who knows? Maybe Virginia Roberts will uh, comply um, because she has nothing to hide. Who knows? I doubt that. But failing that, they're going to have to convince the court that Virginia Roberts 
was planning some kind of crime, there is a crime fraud exceptions to the testimonial privileges. So if the doctor has evidence that Virginia Roberts was committing a crime and she has information about that, then she can talk to the court. But I don't think that's the case here because they don't even claim that Virginia Roberts did, did any crime. So the crime fraud exception doesn't apply. I don't think there were any third parties present when the psychological examinations were going on. So so the uh, the uh, communications between the doctor and the patient here are privileged. The privilege applies. So I don't know wh why they think they can get Dr. Lightfoot to comply with this uh, de deposition and answer all these questions. They're very personal uh, details of Virginia Roberts' uh, sessions with her. So I don't I don't understand. Maybe I'm missing something here. Um, I read through all of this stuff. They don't really provide any justification for why they think that she's going to comply because doctors can be sued if they violate privilege. Dr. Lifehood can be sued civilly for millions of dollars by Virginia Roberts if she leaks all this information about Virginia Roberts to the Prince Andrew's side. OK, Th doctors refuse to even cooperate with federal authorities and, and with the government. This is a civil lawsuit, not even a criminal lawsuit, right? Sometimes the DA's, DA's office and the U.S. Attorney's office, whoever, they try to get information about patients that are criminals from the doctors and the doctors refuse to comply. Sometimes the patient is killed and the doctor still will not comply because the testimonial privileges, most of them survive death. So even if the patient dies, the, uh, the psychotherapist um, patient relationship still exists and the doctor can still refuse because the patient has to approve of breaking privilege. The patient is the one who holds the privilege. Just like in the attorney client relationship, the client is the one who holds the privilege. And we talked about that when we talked about victim Jane um, last month during the trial. So the bottom line here is that unless Virginia Roberts has specifically waived the doctor-patient confidentiality privilege here, uh, Dr. Lightfoot should not be talking to anyone about the personal contacts that she had with Virginia Roberts during their sessions. That's privilege information. OK, so may, I don't know, maybe Prince Andrew's side has somehow gotten Virginia Roberts to um, allow Dr. Lightfoot to give her all this information, this personal information. I would be very surprised if that's the case. But I see uh, a motion coming from the Virginia Roberts side saying that they oppose the deposition of Lightfoot. OK, so that's my prediction. I predict that most likely they will be um, they will be opposing this motion to depose um, Dr. Lightfoot based on the privilege, but um, but we'll see what happens. Okay, maybe they've worked out some kind of deal that I don't know about, but it does seem very fishy that they're just you know they're asking the doctor to be deposed as if the doctor is like just like any other person, right? Any other old Joe that she knew in her life. That's not the case. So just like last time, they're asking for the court, for the federal court, Judge Kaplan and uh, uh, the clerk of the court to approve this and send this to the authorities in Australia, just like we talked about yesterday, asking Sigurd McCauley, asking the judge to approve this these letters and send it to the UK. So similar thing is happening here but with Australia, okay? And with that being said, that's all I got to say for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, make sure to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell, and press all for future videos. And if you want to support my work, you can do so on Patreon down below by going to the link in the description box. And you can support the show for just $1 a month, and your support will be much appreciated. With that being said, I'll see you guys all in my next video. As always, peace.